Hi. I'm going to be talking to you about scientific notation and significant figures, but I think before we start with that, it's a good idea to talk about rounding. I know a lot of people are really good at rounding. I just want to make sure you're, uh, you know, you know the rules. So first of all, if you want, let's say two decimal places, you know, you're supposed to just chop off anything after that. Um, but you also do the rounding rules, which is that you may have to round up or keep it the same. And the rule is if the number is five, six, seven, eight, or nine, then you round it up. And if it's not, then you leave it the same. So for example, um, we could say, all right, well, 5.6789, if we wanted two decimal places, we would just say, we would look at the two decimal places, so two after the decimal, which is a seven, and we would look at the number after it, that is an eight, which means I have to round it up, so that means it's, this number is going to be become one more than that, so 5.68, for example. There we go, rounded, that's why, haha, <laughs> round up the cattle, and even 400, sorry. <laughs> All right, so let's actually talk about significant figures. That's where it gets really interesting. Um, significant figures tell you something about precision. They tell you something about how we actually gathered that data or that information. So there's a few things about it I want to talk about. First of all, on exams, you should always use three significant figures if you're not otherwise told. There is an exception, which is if it's with finance, for example, then you, you know it's often just use two decimal places. So there's a few things like that. But otherwise, if you're not told, use three. So on average, we say that zeros to the left are not significant. On average, we say that zeros to the right are, but there's a caveat here. We're going to have to sort of we have to be careful with that one. Not always, though. Watch out. And then I'm going to talk to you about making a non-zero sandwich, and what do I mean by that? So let's look at the first one here. This one right here. If we say um, this number 25.30, well, let's see. I count the 2, 5, the 3, and do I count the 0? Yep, it's to the right. So I'm going to say, oh, great. The reason why I count this one is because it tells me something about the precision. We know this value quite precisely. We know this answer. So because of that, then we're going to count all four of them. So 4SF. We normally write SF for short for significant figures. Now this one right here, let's see. There's only one non-zero number, and there's only zeros to the left. They're not significant, so we don't count them. So here we're just going to say one significant figure. That's it. This one, however, is quite interesting, because if you use this rule just blindly, you'd say, well, zeros to the right are significant. There's the 7 plus the 2 after it. There must be three significant figures. However, it's not always the case. It actually, you could be seen as one significant figure. And I would say this is ambiguous. You know, it's something that's it's not clear. We'd have to know information about We'd have to know something about this. For example, um, I would say this. It's going to be one significant figure unless you're told that, you know, this is, I don't know, let's say you're counting up whole numbers, you know, and then you, it's not just an estimate, you know, you didn't just do some rounding, it's it's actually counting up, you know, one, two, three, all the way up to 700, then sure, I guess then it's three significant figures. So it's not always super clear. This is an ambiguous one. This one, however, is nice and clear. This is what I talk about a non-zero sandwich. I mean, take the leftmost non-zero number, Take the rightmost non-zero number, and that's sort of your sandwich. That's like your bread and your bread, and then so use everything in the middle. So we count one, two, three, four, five significant figures. We just count everything in between those numbers. That's it. So scientific notation. Um, like this one, when the whole fights, uh, class fights whether two or three is incorrect, your answer is like something crazy. Uh, when we write scientific notation, we're trying to write something in the most compact form. We want to write a big, gross number with as few zeros as possible. I mean, this, this happens a lot in science. We use huge numbers or really tiny numbers, and we get tired of writing all the zeros. So a nice thing was invented. Uh, what we call it scientific notation. That's what it's known as. So we write something like this. We say a times 10 to the power of k. These are just constants. It's like a number you have to find there, and you have to find this number k. And normally we define a as uh, something between 1 and 10, so I'm going to write that down. So a, I'm going to put a 10, and I'm going to put a 1 here. And it can actually equal 1, but it can't equal 10. So something like this. This is actually the form we're going to be using in these. So how can I actually uh, do this? This is something that causes people problems sometimes. That's why I wanted to show you. So first of all, we're going to do this little trick I taught you just now before called making a non-zero sandwich. What do I mean by that? Look at the leftmost non-zero number, look at the rightmost non-zero number, and count them all. In this case, let's see here. 3 is the leftmost one, 4 is the next one. I need all the numbers there. So I need a 3, a 5, a 2, 8, 0, and 4. I need all of them. 
The idea is this number must be the same as this. The, the, we can't be estimating or rounding here. We're trying to do the exact value here. I mean, we may actually want to you know, round it to three significant figures later, but if we're not told to do that, then I'm going to write the, the full answer here. So first of all, I wrote this. Uh, well, this number isn't equal to this, so I'll have to see what I do. I want a decimal after the first number. See, that's to force it to be like this. Do you notice? That's to force this a between 1 and 10. All right, now I have to move the exponent, uh, you know, to move the decimal as needed. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to write it times 10 to the power of something here. And I have to fill out what is that something going to be. Well, do you notice I've artificially added a decimal here. But there exists a real decimal. The real decimal is actually right here. So I look at where did I put it versus where it really is and how many over do I have to go. So from here, I go over to the right by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to the right. So that's why this answer here is going to be times 10 to the 10. That's how powers of 10 work. That's actually really nice. This number is exactly the same as that. We haven't lost anything. Now, if I wanted three significant figures, then I'd say like 3.53 times 10 to the 10. And there we go. Then I would have it to three significant figures. But I think in this question right here, it would be a good idea to just leave it like this. That would be good. Let's do the next one. So the next one right here, 0 0.0002187. Non-zero sandwich means I take the 2 and the 7. I count those, both of them. So I'm going to write down 2187. I include everything in between the 2 and the 7. Okay, then I put the decimal after the first number. Boom, I write times 10 to the power of something. And where did I put my decimal? Well, I artificially put it here. It's really here. So here I have to go to the left by 1, 2, 3, 4. Now if I just put 10 to the 4, just watch out for this. If I just said 10 to the 4, that makes numbers bigger. That makes it go to the right. I don't want to do that. I want it to go to the left. And making numbers smaller, if you remember your rules of negative exponents, this is how we do it. We could, I mean, this could also be seen as uh, 2.187, uh, you know, times 1 over 10 to the 4. That's what, this is a negative exponent. You don't have to worry about it too much. This is the trick here. So just go to the left, it's negative exponents. To the right, it's a positive exponent. That's it. Now I was thinking about this, like, why, why is this helpful? Like I said before, we write really huge numbers or small numbers in a compact way. It tells us something about the precision. So if I know a number is like point, you know, 0 0.01, then I know something about its precision. So that's good. Uh, why might you care? I mean, there's a lot of things that we can actually measure that are in these different units. So, for example, the speed of light. I like physics, so, you know, I like that one. We call it C, for example. It tells you how fast does light go in one second. Turns out it goes 300,000 kilometers in one second. So we could write it as 3 times 10 to the 8. Turns out we can say meters per second. That's one of them. Uh, Avogadro's number in chemistry, we say this is Na. Sometimes we write with N with a little A on it. Um, and that is 6.02 times 10 to the, what is it, 23? And it'll be uh, atoms, you know, uh, per mole. So it's atoms for every one mole. So in chemistry, we have a, a unit called a mole. So this is how many atoms. So look, this is a huge number, right? This is 602 with a ton of zeros, right? Uh, we have a gravitational constant if you want to know how gravity actually... Oh, wait a second. That reminds me of a dumb joke. Um, Avogadro's number. Uh, we have a really, really stupid joke for chemistry. What is it? It's um, how does a chemist make guacamole? They use Avogadro's. Oh, God. Uh, okay, so I hate me. <laughs> I hate myself for that. Uh, gravitational constant in uh, physics, we have that. It tells you about yeah how gravity actually works. It's not 9.81. That's actually the gravitational acceleration or acceleration due to gravity. But we actually have a constant in the universe. It's called capital G, and it's uh, what is it? 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. And it's, uh, what is it? Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Whoops, I should probably write in the proper format per kilogram squared, so something like that. So this is a very small number. So we have big numbers, small numbers, we use them for real. And this is the, oh, so important, pro tip here, do not use calculator notation. What I mean by that is some calculators, like I know on the TI-84, the TI-INSPIRE, sometimes you're doing a calculation and your answer, it, it gives you something like 1.82E4. Do not write that on your exam. You need to write it properly. This is just the calculator's short form for saying this. So in other words, you would not want to write two, uh, 1.82 E4. You'll actually lose marks if you did this, so don't do this. Okay? 
the way to write it is actually instead to write it like 1.82, do it in scientific notation, times 10 to the power of 4. That's what this is telling you. This E4 just tells you times 10 to the, so that's the key. Hope this was helpful.